welcome to another exciting episode of ancient anecdotes powered by listen kamma this is your host ramanathan ayer and this is anjan ayer and this is lalita ramanathan appa you've come to pick me up from school today yes papa we have to catch a train in the afternoon we need to rush to the station if you come by the school bus we might miss it come 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 okay pa appa today in school you know what happened what papa our teacher asked us to move some wood pieces next to our class so we can build the log cottage model oh building work is it how exciting yeah all the children were bringing some wood okay hmm manobala was bringing huge heavy logs who is this manobala pa the big boy from 6th grade pa hey listen everyone in 6th grade is big as far as you are concerned isn't it yes but this is manobala pa he's the biggest boy in the whole school look there oh right i see what you mean i mean i see whom you mean yeah him okay listen so manobala was making himself useful and bringing some heavy logs shrinkala and shrikala were carrying smaller wood pieces okay oh yes the twins from kindergarten who wear pom pom scrunchies on their pony tails yes and shrikala toppled suddenly and fell with the wood oh no and this manobala no he started laughing at her well hearing how you describe her falling it must have looked pretty funny isn't it appa don't side with that meanie mano he should not make fun of smaller children just because they aren't as strong isn't it oh ho that's right actually i am so sorry papa see at least you got it when i explained mano didn't get it only instead when i took the side of the twins and asked mano to back off he started threatening to throw me over the wall the nerve did he now what a nerve then what did you do i told him see if humility is not there where strength is it is of no use pa what an awesome choice of words what a line where did you learn it pa appa you only narrated the bhima anjaneyam to me no the story of bhima meeting hanumanta in the vana parva of mahabharatam no how bhima's pride over his superhuman strength was quashed by an old monkey hmm i did didn't i but did you know that the mahabharatam also has other stories where such ridicule towards weaker people was not dealt with kindly severe punishment was given were manobalas there as well in life there are always going to be manobalas everywhere granddad used to tell us the story of the valakhilya sages in kashyapa prajapati's putra kameshti yagnam now this time i am not going to ask if the valakilyas also lifted the wood and somebody laughed at them hmm why pa then what every time you draw a parallel and tell me a story i never get this comparison right <laughs> what why are you laughing because this time you are right the valakilyas were indeed carrying wood and were laughed at oh god this is a trick situation <laughs> right but doesn't matter now do you remember jatayu's description of the prajapatis in valmiki ramayana 
I think I remember this one. You made me remember this in our first episode, Pa, in the Varaha Avatara one. Kardama Pratama Stesham Vikrita Stadanantaraha Sheshascha Samshrayas Chaiva Bahuputrascha Viryavan Sthanar Marichir Atrascha Kratuschaiva Mahabalaha Pulastyaschangiraschaiva Pracheta Pulahastata Daksho Vivasvana Paro Arishtane Mischa Raghava Kasya Pischa Maha Tejaha Tesham Asicha Paschimaha Chamattu Kutti. Good. So you know that Kashyapa was the last Prajapati. Now I am going to up your game and see if you remember everything. Okay, Pa. By the time Kashyapa Prajapati was created, Kratu Prajapati had already married Daksha's daughter Sannati and Pulastya Prajapati had married Havir Bhuhu and Manini. Are you with me? Kratu married Sannati and Pulastya married Havir Bhu and Manini. Okay, Pa. Good. Pulastya's wife Havir Bhu is important because she bore the world the great Agastirishi. And Manini is important because she bore the world the great sage Vishravasa. Are you still listening? Agastya and Vishravas are Pulastya's sons and are half brothers. Good job. Now, Vishravas has a pretty important reason to be remembered because his sons, though through different wives, are Kubera, Ravana, Kumbhakarna, Vibhishana, Khara, and Shurpanakha. Wow! All these are half siblings having Vishnavas as their father. Yes. Now listen up. Much before Pulastya married Havir Bohu and Manini, Kratu Prajapati suddenly realized that he needed some support to further his asceticism. Sage Kratu conducted a powerful Putra Kameshti Yajna as well. At the end of the Yajna, Kratu Prajapati obtained a sanctified sacrificial pitcher with energized waters and gave it to Sannati. Sannati, my dearest, Kratu said, Behold the holy pitcher which holds the water energized from the mighty Yajna. Drink it and you will bear 60,000 invincible sons. But pay heed. You are to sit down and drink the holy waters in 60,000 small installments very, very slowly. Grandad used to tell us that, according to legend, the blemishless Sannati became tired holding the energy sizzling picture and gulped down the water as fast as possible. As a result, 60,000 sons were born. These sons were just about the height of a thumb. Since the water was swallowed quickly, they would never grow beyond this height. But the raging energy of the sanctified waters rendered these children with devotion, merit, ascetic prowess beyond the imagination. But since they were born from swallowing water, they were quick to get angry. Thus were born the Balakilyas. All because she gulped the water down, they became small. Is it? Yes, Papa. Especially for girls, this is why the tradition is to ask girls to sit down and drink water slowly. Okay? Wow! Small, kutti, grumpy sages with mighty powers. Yes, kutti. But they were not grumpy all the time. They were often seen in deep meditation, hanging upside down from trees. Only when someone messes with them, they get really angry. Okay, so did they get angry? They did. Now, by the time Valakhilyas grew under Kratu's careful education and attained multiple accolades in penance and tapasya. How much did they grow, Pa? Mm, not much, Pa. Anyhow, Kashyapa was born and soon afterwards he married Aditi, Diti, Danu, Kalika, Tamra, Krodhavasa, Anala and Manu. Each of these wives were to bear mighty sons and daughters, each wife for each earthly and divine races. Kashyapa instructed them accordingly, but only Aditi 
and Diti and Kalika put their attention to Kashyapa's injunction seriously. The rest of the wives did not. Tastu kanyastata prita har Kashyapa punarabhravit Putram strailokya bhartrun vai Janaishyata matsaman Aditistan manarama Ditischa manu jarshabha Kalika cha mahabaho Sheshastva manaso bhavan Adityam jagnire deva Trayastrim shatarindama Aditya vasavo rudra Yashvino cha parantapa As a result, 33 deities and one supreme Indra in all were born to Aditi. How 33, Pa? There were 12 Adityas, 8 Vasus, 11 Rudras and 2 Ashwini Kumaras. How much totally? 12 plus 11 plus 8 plus 2 is 33, Pa. Exactly. To Diti, the Daityas were born. The Srimad Bhagavatam also indicates that Mother Diti underwent specific tapas to create the Marutas, who were equal in stature to Devendra. And we also know that the power-hungry Indra went to every extent to stop this process. That Indra fellow. Anyhow, Tamara and the others didn't take Kashyapa very seriously. So, in order to ensure that all his wife would bear appropriate children, Kashyapa embarked on a mighty Putrakamesh Yajna. All of creation came to the assistance of Kashyapa. The Gandharvas, the Rishis, even Devendra came down to help their father conduct the Homa. Kashyapa's wives, Vinata and Kadru, also came to his aid. Vinata worked day and night for weeks at end, adroitly helping Sage Kashyapa with every need. She forgot the meaning of rest. Sage Kashyapa was delighted by her dedication. Oh Vinata, you haven't had a minute of respite. Soon, all your commitment will yield fruits. Dawn is almost here. It is time. Go and complete your ablutions and be ready for the final ahutis. I will need you to receive the divine energies of the yajna. He said, Vinata agreed and went to take her bath and complete her practices. The yajna proceeded and the hotas continued to conduct the rite impeccably. Such a great ritual naturally needed so much of wood as fuel. Indra carried huge trees the size of mountains without much effort. Like Manobala. Yes, the Balakhilyas were already small. Due to eons of rigorous penance without proper food, they were weak and emaciated. So, they basically carried whatever they could. They also carried trees, Pa? They felt they were carrying trees only, but like your friends Shrinkala and Shrikala, they only managed to carry twigs. Yajata putra kamasya kashyapasya prajapate Sahayam rishayo deva gandharvas chadadhukkilaham Tatre managane shakro niyukta kashyape naham Munayo valakhilyascha Yechanye deva daganaha Shakrastu virya sadrishyam Idma bharam giri prabham Samudyam yana yamasa <laughs> See, Papa, that's exactly what Manobala did. And you shouted at them, isn't it? Oops, sorry, Pa. Anyhow, Indra also laughed at them and walked right above them. There were small dents on the sacrificial ground where cows and horses had passed by some time back. The rains from the night before had filled these dents with rain water. But these small puddles felt like deep pools to the Valakhilyas. With Indra walking right above them, they missed their footing on these pools and fell into the waters with their twigs. Oh God! Yes, 
Although he was much younger to the small rishis, Indra burst out laughing at the sight of them tripping into the water. The Valakhilya's patience wore thin and they were engulfed in a wave of anger and sorrow. They immediately sat in a semicircle around Kashyapa's powerful sacrificial fire. As the flames crackled with gusto into the morning skies, the Valakhilya's poured a huge oblation of ghee into it. The venerable sage Kratu's ample tutelage in conducting masterful yajnas shone a blaze through their shining eyes. Their gaze humbled the huge sacrificial fire in its luster. They invoked the energies of Tatpurusha and Ishana of the great Lord Shiva and demanded his divine presence. O Lord of the universe, we seek your divine presence to grant us justice. Purandra here, desiring strength and victory, has failed in his duty of granting protection to the weak. Instead, he mocks us of our shortcomings. May there be a son born to Kashyapa, equal in stature, metal, prowess and skill to Shatakratu. May the son of Kashyapa have the fury strength to effortlessly trounce Indra's power. May he be the best among all beings, in manner and humility as well. May this ranger of the skies dwarf Indra's accomplishments and be the bastion of all the weak beings in the universe. Shambho Mahadeva. Indra's smile abruptly vanished into thin air as the small sages finished their incantation. The environment suddenly cooled down into a biting frost as Lord Mahadeva's glacial aura filled the sacrificial grounds. All the sages who were seated rose hastily. Divine conscious were blown and the sound of a million drums emanated from the skies. Shiva's gaze met Indra's frightened visage. Indra felt like he melted into a pool of water. Shiva's face spread into a warm smile as he affectionately regarded the Valakhilyas. So be it, he told them. And the next second, the Lord vanished into the morning skies. As the sun rose above the mountains in the east, the coolness vanished. Vinata, meanwhile, was taking her dips in the mighty Sarayu river. When she was underwater, a lot had transpired above. And she was completely oblivious of everything that had happened. Adjusting her sari over her semi-wet hair, she hastily arrived to Sage Kashyapa's side. Why is everyone so quiet? Why is Indra looking like he just has swallowed a huge pineapple all by himself by mistake and he doesn't know what to do? Is that what he is asking my Swami, Sage Kashyapa, right now? What is the matter of the Valakhilyas? Why are they seeming very happy? Her thoughts were racing in her head. Indra, meanwhile, fell at Kashyapa's feet, seeking refuge. Kashyapa pacified Indra and turned to the sages. O oh, revered sages, Pitamaha Brahma's injunctions give Indra his status. His actions may be flawed, but by creating his equal, there will be unrest and struggle in the heavens. You are tapasvis of the highest order. Your sankalpa should reinforce my lineage and should not upset the balance of Swarga instead. Please do not put the mighty Indra in a tight spot in the process. The sages regained their awareness as their anger suddenly vanished. They turned to Vinata. O oh mother, O oh peerless Vinata, don't you worry. Your son will surely be the unrivaled ruler of the skies. Just you watch. Our blessings are with you. Vinata looked suitably puzzled and blank, but Obediently, she prostrated at the feet of the tiny sages immediately with lot of reverence. The sages blessed her and then turned and faced Sage Kashyapa. Oh Sage, you're right. This is indeed your yajna. It does not make sense for us to bring our squabbles into it. But our sankalpa is true and it is desired by all of us. But may the fruits of our prayers be utilized for the sake of your lineage and welfare. May you be the one to decide if there be competition with Indra or not. Kashyapa thanked them, turned and held Vinata by her shoulders happily. Oh Devi, the inception 
of your journey will be marked by success unfolding exactly as your heart desires from you shall emerge two sons not just ordinary children but heroes destined to be the sovereigns of the three worlds their valor and wisdom will be the stuff of legends their names etched into the annals of time but you must promise me that you will be patient and careful with this pregnancy for it will test your patience for sure but one among your children will ascend to become the sovereign of all birds commanding the skies with his indomitable spirit his prowess in flight will be unmatched his courage unassailable he will be adored and revered a hero whose name will become synonymous with strength and freedom uvacha chainam bhagavan maricha punare धार्यताम प्रमादेन गर्भो अयम सुमहोदय ये कसर्व पतत्रीणाम योग्रत्व कारगेष्यति लोकसंभावीर काम वीर गम वेट पपा पेशेंस ओ गॉड कश्यपा टर्न टू अ डाउन कास्ट इंद्र ओ माइटी शतक्रतु फियर नॉट These two sons of Vinata will be your brothers and will aid you in your work. There won't be any enmity between the both of you. Appa! <sighs> okay, go on. Kama Virya Vihangamaha Best among birds. Are we talking about the mighty Garuda? Yes, who else? Legend has it that Vinata gives birth to Garuda after a thousand year pregnancy. Garuda goes on to best Indra and his mighty army and yet maintains the friendship with them. Appa, so the story is about the Valakilya sending Garuda to kick Indra's Hey, language. Um to keep Indra under control. Hmm, better. So the learning is that if Manobala troubles the twins we will go and complain to ramya teacher is it ada illa pa the learning is that although indra was strong enough to lift huge trees the small statured valakilyas were able to create someone stronger than indra you should never comment about someone's physicality body shaming has become so rampant nowadays if people are emotionally weak especially It is necessary to render support to them. That is the core symbolism behind this story. Appa, but tell me, how did Garuda manage to defeat and yet maintain friendship with Indra? If you fight, you'll become enemies, isn't it? Were these two like frenemies? Hear it first on Ancient Anecdotes. on your favorite podcast streaming providers tune in for a brand new episode